Now, hedge funds may be about to be clipped for good. As the regulators close in, can the industry justify its reason for existence? Well, to answer that question, I'm joined by Bloomberg columnist Matthew Lynn. Good to see you, Matthew. So, who has the easier job, the guy defending the hedge funds or the tobacco lobbyist trying to convince people that smoking isn't so bad for you? <laughs> well, it's probably a close, close, close call at the moment, and the tobacco guy arguably is doing a better job, um, <laughs> although not a fantastic job. I think, I, th I think it's interesting. I mean, you know, we're seeing a huge amount of regulatory attack on the hedge funds coming from all kinds of different places, high frequency trading in the States, short selling in the European Union. And I, I, so I suspect you're going to see a lot more of that over, over the next few years, rightly or wrongly. You know, people are trying to sort out the mess in the financial system. And one of the things that struck me was just how, how bad the industry has been at defending itself. It's, it's stuck in a kind of time warp. It's, it's, it's using the same arguments from five years ago, and it doesn't seem to have moved on and recognised that the world has changed a little bit. And why is that? I think. I mean, I think they, maybe they've got a bit lazy. They've just got a bit it's sort of stuck in a groove, a bit like a record. You know, it's got caught cool on the same loop. I mean, they're saying things like in the states where they're getting you know investigations on on the whole high frequency trading mm -hmm. issue, which is you know hedge funds that hold stocks for you know a second or slightly less than a second, and and they say it's all about market liquidity, but it's it's really just not a plausible argument. I mean. You know, there is an argument in a debate, as we know, in financial markets, we had about liquidity. There are some small companies, distant companies. You don't buy, you don't buy the shares or invest money because you don't know if you can sell them. But we're talking about companies like Nestle or Vodafone. You know, does anyone, does anyone sit there thinking, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to buy those shares in Vodafone because I don't, know, I don't know if there's a market for me to sell them. It's just nonsense. You can't get away with this argument. And if you have very weak arguments, you're just not going to win. So they shouldn't be saying that hedge funds help make markets more transparent. What should they be saying? Yeah, they've got, they've got to get away from this. I think one of their problems is they have this, uh, you know, this kind of key assumption that if you have a bigger and busier capital market, you know, that's just a good thing in itself. And I think the lesson of the last couple of years is that's not a good thing in itself. We had a capital market that got bigger and bigger and bigger, got a lot busier, got a lot more active, and then we had the worst financial crisis uh, in 50 or 100, 100 years. So you can't really play that argument anymore. Just say, oh, this makes a better capital market, therefore it's good. You've got to connect uh, to, you know, to the real economy. You've got to say we're doing things for pension funds, we're fluctuating our returns, we're doing things for mortgages, we're trying to make them cheaper by swapping currencies. You've got to come up with real economic arguments. It's quite difficult but if I'm it thinking, happens. But, it's yeah, hard. I was just going to say, I'm thinking they're going to have a tough time convincing people of that as well. Well, they are, they are going to have a tough time. And, and arguably, absolutely, it's impossible. Arguably, it's impossible. Arguably, there is no justification for their existence and they're just a bunch of parasites. That's, that's, that's plausible. But they've got to try. <laughs> Matthew Lynn, as always, good to talk to you.